so uh, what we are talking yesterday in case of semiconductor we talked about certain like uh, energy band we defined as something as valence band and in case of uh, we took example of silicon or germanium semiconductor valence band uh, all valence band of are occupied valence band basically all are occupied and the conduction band so you take example of uh, say silicon and germanium so in the outermost orbit uh, this is something that there eight uh, 2s and 6p eight are possible eight electrons are possible in autumn uh, out of this eight electrons four are occupied and four are empty and uh, if those atoms are at a close spacing as is the case in case of crystal these energy bands split into two levels four of the energy bands are at a higher level four of the energy bands at the lower level and this lower level energy levels are fully occupied and the upper level are fully unoccupied at zero k so unless extra energy is given it splits into two parts these are all energy states are occupied by one electron and these are all empty and this is called as valence band that's called as valence conduction band but as at a room temperature or a higher temperature as energy is given to them uh, when the energy gap in case of semiconductor is less than 3 electron volts so some of the electrons which are in valence band they are able to move into the conduction band and once they are into conduction band there's so many energy states are available in the conduction band to move around so these electrons become free to move and similarly as each electron move from valence band to conduction band it leaves behind a hole it leaves behind a vacancy vacancy also is uh, treated as we can treat this as a positive charge or which is called as a hole so here also where a vacancy is there electrons can uh, in valence band can move and occupy a hole in the valence band which also creates a motion of hole here motion of electron so electrons move in the conduction band holes move in the valence band and each of this motion contribute to current and we talk of what is any an e and nh let's understand what is any and nh here any and nh are similar to uh, we in case of current electricity we use the term called n n was number of free electrons per unit volume here also when we talk about any any is number of electrons per unit volume in conduction band not all electrons how many electrons only a small fraction of valence electron go into conduction band and nh indicates a number of holes per unit volume in valence band and these two in case of intrinsic semiconductor both are equal it is formed by splitting one electron moving from here to here so these numbers are equal and we give some name that num name is an i okay so this is thermal energy generated electron hole pair and uh, under the influence of electric field so uh, there is a pair if you notice here also this is electron and this is a hole if we apply an electric field left to right it exerts a force in electron towards left direction and hole can be treated as positive charge the force will act in the right direction the hole tends to move in the right direction electron moves tends to move in the red di uh, left direction so both electron in the conduction band as well as hole in the valence band these two these two pair create a current due to motion of electron current due to motion of holes and both put together is the resulting current in case of uh, intrinsic semiconductor and as i mentioned and it can also happen this electron if there's a hole here this electron which is generated here uh, yes it can this also low energy state it may go and occupy the hole here moment a hole and electron conduction electron and hole when they recombine it destroys an hole pair electron pair and this is a, so due to heat electron hole pair gets generated and recombination also takes place in a study a state both are going together and both reach an equal so rate of hole electron pair generation and recombination are equal that's why any and nh remain constant in a study state at a given temperature the concentration of electrons we can call it as a free electrons or conduction electrons and number concentration of free electrons and concentration of holes are equal and constant then we can we relate the uh, see uh, in case of current electricity based on n we found a formula for current and based on that we also arrived at conductivity and resistivity something similar can be done in case of semiconductor uh, 
we use a term called mobility mobility is uh, is it just think of a definition what is mobility is a drift velocity per unit field so what i can write my drift velocity per unit field so mobility is vd by e that's the mobility based on this mobility we can find an expression for resistance of a semiconductor and conductivity and resistivity let's see how do you find what is the total current here we know in case of total current uh, current is equal to neavd that's the uh, understanding of current in case of current electricity only thing what is substitute here in case of vd vd can be written as mu times the field so in, in place of mu we are replaced by mu times which is mobility and field is nothing but potential gradient p by l so this is the expression and in this expression what is so what is v by i v by i is resistance so if i write v by i v by i term comes something like this and this term is nothing but rho and inverse of rho is conductivity so what is conductivity in terms of mobility conductivity is n into e into mobility that's conductivity so when we talk about conductivity in case of semiconductor so there's a mobility of electron and there's a mobility of hole so what it says is electrons will tend to move in some direction some speed vd and hole also will move, move with some uh, drift velocity vdh these two are not equal that's why the mobilities are not equal and in most cases we find the speed of or drift velocity of a hole is lower this seems to have higher inertia we are not going to why is that so but this is uh, tend to be this speed to be lower hence mobility of hole is smaller so we uh, similar to current here there are two currents is generated because of two different uh, reasons due to electron uh, due to conduction electron or you may call it as error uh, and due to hole as well so we write this two expression any indicates what is any indicates what does any indicates this is number concentration any is this term any is concentration of electrons or number of electrons in conduction band per unit volume any and nh we put this mobility and mu e is greater than mu h and from here we can get conductivity with some of these two so pretty simple and if you just understand mobility is drift velocity per unit field you can easily arrive arrive at this expression in maybe about 20 seconds so those who can arrive at this expression in 20 seconds no need to memorize this formula else you need to memorize okay uh, then by extracting the so far we have talked about intrinsic semiconductor now we'll look at what is extrinsic semiconductor why do we use in in case of uh, intrinsic semiconductor the conductivity is still very very low so for many practical application we need conductivity which is higher than what is possible in intrinsic semiconductor and that is achieved by a process called doping what is doping and doping is we add impurity in a semiconductor at what level at ppm level so one ppm means one part per million what does one part per million mean for million number of atoms of semiconductor we add only one atom of impure material that's one 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 part one part per million so which basically i hope all of you understand one ppm means one impurity one impure atom or whatever dope atom for 10 to power 6 semiconductor atoms that's one ppm mean so very small number if we add this kind of impurity in a semiconductor it increases conductivity so we appropriate type of impurity let's understand so what is the impurity added what level very small number but it increases conductivity by a factor of even more than a million we'll see how does it happen so now impurities are of two types of impurities are added one type of impurity is called n type and n type impurity the material which is added or atoms of material which is doped doped means adding impurity in very small proportion here the impurity which is added is pentavalent so pentavalent so this is something you see this kind of structure is there and suppose uh, we, it is silicon it is silicon semiconductor we have so many atoms of silicon but if uh, it is added at 1 ppm level out of 1 million such silicon atoms one atom will be occupied by this impurity which is pentavalent so this is pentavalent impurity how what is the occurrence of this in order of few ppm so i hope you understand this is not 1 in 5 very small proportion 
So what would happen here? Once you add a pentavalent impurity here, this atom has five valence electrons. Four of them will form covalent bond. There's one extra electron, which is unbound electron. And we know the bound electron always has lower energy. Unbound will have higher energy. So it ends up overall, it still is neutral. Just understand here, overall whole thing is neutral, but still there's one electron, which is unbound electron, which is like a free electron. And this free electron is something which is not needed. It is at higher level, and this behaves like a free electron. And which are the pentavalent, pentavalent impurity, which is normally used, ASP. ASP means what? What does A stand for? Arsenic here. Uh, S is antimony, and P is phosphorus. These are the common. Uh, pentavalent impurities which are added at ppm level and let's see understand what happens in that case it is something like this so energy level of this electron you know this is what does this valence bond indicate valence bond indicates energy level of all electrons which are occupied all electron position which are occupied even this electron also this is this has an energy level and thus energy level is initially occupied here so what do we call it? This is we call it as a donor impurity. The reason we call it as a donor impurity, it donates an electron. And the reason we call it as N, because got this free charge carrier has a negative charge. It increases concentration of NE, negative charge carrier. That's why called N type. It is also called donor type because it donates an electron. So this is a normal convention. So this electron, see here, what are these electrons? These electrons are electrons in the valence band of silicon. And what does this indicate here? These are also electrons here. Which are these electrons? These electrons are this fifth electron of pentavalent material. So this is this is addition energy state. And since this energy is higher, the uh, these electrons have a very small energy gap compared to conduction band. And gap is of order of 0 0.01 electron electron volts. So this very easily get ionized. Uh, they easily move into conduction band. So it creates a it gets that's the basic idea behind impurity. Ionization energy for this electron is very low because already it is an energy level higher than bound electron or electrons which are part of the covalent band. So very small energy. So earlier the energy gap, which is order of one electron volt or more, it becomes equal to 0 0.01 for this electron. So typically what we find when we add impurity, all in all cases, this extra electron moves into conduction band. So what will the concentration of uh, this donor electron concentration? This concentration will be as equal to concentration of donor impurity. So if we add pentavalent atom at one ppm level, the electrons which get added also, what will the concentration of electron due to this impurity, due to this donor electron? This also will have same concentration as the impurity of the, as the concentration of impurity. So it lowers the gap. The gap becomes equal to 0 0.01 to 0 0.05, a very small number. So each dopant atom, what we call each atom which is added is impurity, which atom which is doped. So dope, uh, dopant is a name of the material which is added, which is doped. So each dopant atom donates one free electron to conduction band. And since it donates, it's called donor impurity. And uh, if we have more of these free electrons, uh, suddenly the population of free electrons has if it goes up, recombination of electron and hole also increases. So more number of holes will get filled up by this donor electron. Hence, uh, concentration of hole reduces even further. So effect of adding this impurity. Let's very simply look at what is the effect of impurity. Before the impurity was added, there was any value, NH value, uh, because this is because of thermal energy, uh, electron hole pairs were formed. And this pair will depend on energy gap and temperature. If energy gap is smaller, this will be higher. If temperature is higher, this value will be higher. Moment we add uh, impurity here, pentavalent impurity, it creates a lot of donor electrons, which also, what kind of, where would those, they be? Those, all these electrons, which are at this level, they get into conduction band. So any value due to impurity is becomes equal to ND. What is ND here? ND is number of dopant atoms per unit volume. So each, since each one contributes to one electron, so this NE dash, this impure, this uh, NE was because of electron hole uh, pair formation in intrinsic semiconductor. This is because of doping. 
So what is final Ne will be? It will be sum of elect uh, this and uh, concentration plus extra electron concentration on account of doping. And this value we'll see here. We'll see one simple numerical. You'll find this numericals are fairly simple. And Ne becomes much, much energy. So in case of n type semiconductor, any concentration, the concentration of free electrons is much greater than concentration of whole. But there's another property here. So decrease in NH further increases in the combination. What happens this N type, other is P type impurity. What is P type impurity is doped with trivalent impurity, uh, which is trivalent BIA, boron, indium, and then aluminum. And P type impurity is trivalent impurity, similar to this also in PPM level. Suppose we uh, add this impurity at one PPM. So out of 1 million atoms of germanium, one atom will be that of boron, if it is boron impurity. But boron has only, see, in case of germanium, they form four covalent bands. So they share four orbital electron, valence, valence band electrons. But boron has only three. So there's a kind of a hole here. Or hole indicates a, a space which, for which they need an electron. So you see, it has a fairly low energy level. It has, in a, since wherever see, we say electron affinity, electron affinity means the energy level required for that electron is low. Even a low energy electron also can come and occupy this space. So per addition of a trivalent impurity is equivalent to creating one hole for each atom of dopant material. So every doped atom creates a hole for conduction. That's why I call it acceptor impurity. And here the NH goes up and NH is taken as positive, hence it's called P-type. So you understand why it is called P-type, why it is called acceptor impurity. It creates a hole which can accept electron from other atoms. Now, since this is low level, the electrons from germanium also, this electron can move in here. Now they have, we will see, but yes. Sir, so why do we always take the hole as a positive charge? See, uh, why do we keep, uh, keep see, see, if we take uh, this small space here, okay, let's take uh, what does hole mean? When the, we started with something like semiconductor. It had four electrons. If one electron moves out, one electron goes into conduction band. If I take a small space, there's a hole created here. Now, this atom, will, will it not have a positive charge? Yes. And so this small space, this space will have a negative charge. Overall, it still remains neutral. So we treat and, and uh, so this space will behave as if there's a positive charge here. And if this hole moves from one atom to other atom, it is equivalent to positive charge moving from here to here. So hole, the motion of hole, creates same result as the motion of a positive charge would have created for purpose of current. That's why I call this a positive charge. Yes. If the position of hole in a structure of a material keeps shifting, its effect, to, effect is equivalent to a positive charge moving along the direction of hole. And so this is a kind of a, a simplified model. As I said in the beginning, most of the things here are based on simplified model. And simplified model makes it easier for people to comprehend initially. So what happens in this case? In this case, rather than having up, it does not create an electron which at higher energy level, it creates another energy state. But what is this one here? This also will, this particular hole. See, as we case in case of a transition of electron in hydrogen atom from n is equal to two to one. When it moves to n is equal to two to one, what is one here? There's a vacancy here. And this vacancy is at a lower energy state. So similar way also, when we add this hole also has a, has a certain energy level. And this, energy, this hole is not occupied, unlike this energy state here. And this energy, is where is this energy state coming to? And this particular unoccupied state is very close to valence bond. So this an unoccupied energy state is at a lower level. And since this unoccupied energy state is at a lower level because it wants to attract electron, this energy state is lower than conduction band. So it artificially lowers your conduction band. Since it artificially lowers conductor by conduction band, electron from valence band can easily move into conduction band. And, and with this, uh, as they move into conduction band, 
a uh, lot of holes are created here. So this also, or we can think of it, what is the hole concentration here? Hole concentration, each atom added, creates one hole by creating an energy level which is close to valence band energy. So in both cases, net charge remains zero. So this is called acceptor impurity and it creates a lower energy state in form of hole which readily accepts valence electron. And what will the concentration of NH due to doping? NH concentration will, uh, due to doping will be same as concentration of dopant which is added. And this will take a simple numerical. I think the numerical simplifies things better. Let's take a simple example, which is there in NCRT book. And this particular topic, I think NCRT book is the best resource. So suppose you have pure silicon crystal. And this crystal has so many atoms per meter cube. And this we can easily find out. How do you find out number of atoms in per cubic meter? If we know the density, if density is here something like 2.7 kg per meter cube, so we know what is the density in terms of gram. So how many grams in meter cube divided by molecular weight in grams into Na, we can easily calculate number of atoms in cubic meter. So suppose silicon, it depends on density and molecular weight or per atomic weight. So in this case, suppose silicon crystal has this so many atoms per meter cube. This is given. It is doped by one ppm concentration of pentavalent arsenic. Calculate the number of electrons and holes. What is number of electrons and holes? Uh, those, they mean calculate number of electrons and holes per unit volume after the doping has been added. And what is given here, Ni is given. Let's understand what does Ni mean. So even when this special property which comes in, there's no proof. What is special property? Even when we add dopant, so earlier there was, okay, let's go through that, we'll understand better. So earlier, before the dope, before adding the dopant here, intrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor Ni is given. So what is concentration or number of electrons per unit volume will be equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power 16. That will be concentration of electrons per unit volume in conduction band. That will be equal to number of holes because they generate in pair, which is equal to Ni, which is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power 16. So some of you may will understand this one. This electron hole pair formation is taking place roughly in one, uh, and how many, what is the proportion in home, what proportion of atom is this whole electron pair formation taking place? It is taking place in not even one in billion atoms. That's the ratio. The very small proportion of atoms, this electron hole formation takes place. And this depends on EG energy gap and well as temperature. So this is what happens in case of intrinsic semiconductor. This would happen, it depends on Ni, and Ni has to be given, and Ni, where does it come from? And I have, uh, we don't have to calculate, Ni will depend on energy gap and temperature. So this is what is given now. Now what happened, this was intrinsic case. Now we add a pentavalent, what kind of pentavalent, what would pentavalent do? Pentavalent have five electrons, it will increase the concentration of Ne. It will increase the concentration of free electron. And how much, let's understand here. Okay, so what will be the new concentration after the doping here? After doping, there are some electrons, free electrons because of doping, and there are free electrons because of intrinsic condition. And we can easily calculate this number will be much, much smaller than concentration of free electron due to doping. So what will, so if we add up, uh, if this is the concentration, can we easily calculate how many atoms of, penta, uh, how many atoms of arsenic will be added per cubic meter? See, this is the total number of atoms in a cubic meter. For every 10 to power 6 atom, I added one impurity here. So total number of impurity will be how much? Total number of atoms divided by 10 to power 6, if it is 1 ppm. Had it been 10 ppm, the uh, doping proportion would have been doping proportion into SI atom concentration. So doping concentration will be equal to doping proportion 1 divided by 10 to power 6 into silicon atom concentration, which is 5 into 10 to power 18. And this number comes into 5 into 10 to power 22. So this, these many atoms of arsenic are added. And each of these atoms will lead to one free electron. And so this is the electron. This is coming. Free electron is coming because of doping. So the concentration of free electron will go up. What? And since this number is much smaller than initial concentration of electrons, which is of this order. You notice what is the difference between them? This is a million times higher than this. So I can ignore this number. 
Okay, so this is one we can calculate. So we understood this is the number of, uh, uh, this will be new value of concentration of electrons in the conduction band. But will NH change? There's another property we come to now. What is another property? Even after we add the dopant, the product of electron concentration and hole concentration remains constant, which is equal to Ni square. So once we have this number of, we have the con Ne concentration, Ne dash, new Ne, co uh, Ne concentration, we can calculate Nd concentration also, new NH concentration. So Ne dash into NH dash, this product will remain constant, which will equal to Ni square, will be equal to Ne into NH initial value. This will be equal to NH square. So this is also a, a new kind of formula, a small formula, which you need to make use of. So this here, so what will be the new value of whole concentration? This is the whole concentration earlier. Of course, it will decrease. How much it will come to? We can find out from this formula. We substitute here. We can find the value of NH dash. NH dash equal to, after doping, it becomes equal to 4.5 into 10 to the power 9. So this becomes much lesser. So what has happened? Which were e earlier, each were equal. Now we end up with NH dash much, much greater than NH dash. But the way they have changed, the product of the two has remained unchanged. Whatever product we had earlier here, any into NH, now also any dash and NH dash product, product remains same, which is equal to NI square. Then if the product remains same, what is the advantage? See, when we take on that is the earlier, what are the concentration of all charge carrier? This any also leads to current, uh, facilitates current. NH also facilitates current. So we are looking at total charge carrier. This is a negative charge carrier. This is a positive charge carrier, kind of. Yeah, earlier, this number was equal to twice the Ni. So initial before doping, the total charge carrier, elect, uh, free, free electron as well as hole, was twice this number. Twice this number is equal to how much? It will equal to 1.5 into 10 to power 16 into 2. So 3 into 10 to power 16, this was the concentration of electron plus hole put together per unit volume. After doping, what is this number? This number is uh, an E dash which is equal to doping concentration. I hope you understand why this doping constant, any dash is equal to doping concentration, because the doping concentration is much higher than uh, any value, initial concentration of electron. And this is the per NH constant. How much this number, if we add, we look at compared to this number, this is negligible, you can almost ignore. So this becomes the new concentration of charge carrier. It has increased by what proportion? It has increased, it has increased by more than a million times. So if you want to understand another way to understand, suppose we had two numbers. The product of two numbers has to be 25. So when they're equal, then this is something is Ni square. So what is the product of two numbers when they're equal? The one is Ne, one is NH. So this will be five into five is equal to 25. But if we disturb the balance, what is the total number? Sum of these two, sum of this is equal to 10. But if we disturb, if one is increased, other is decreased. If one is made one, other has to become 25. What is the number? Now the sum of these two becomes 26. So you know, notice the though the product remains same, the sum of the two numbers is minimum and the two numbers are equal. And greater is the imbalance between the two, sum keeps on increasing. That's the reason what we are interested. The conductivity depends on sum of these two numbers. And uh, by doping, even though by the property of semiconductor, product of these Ne and NH has remained constant. The sum has increased by a factor of, we have added how much? We have added in the order of one PPM. It has led to increase in conductivity by a factor of 10 to power six. And this is what is used uh, in semiconductor. This will make semiconductor much more useful for practical purposes. Okay, one, 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 more, one more simple question. It has electron concentration. It means the number of electrons which are in the conduction band is so many in number. And whole concentration also is given. Electron concentration, whole concentration are given. And of course, this cannot be a intrinsic semiconductor. This is extrinsic semiconductor. Here, which concentration is more? NH concentration is much, much greater than any concentration. So what kind of, it is first of all, we can easily understand here is the extrinsic semiconductor. And what kind of this NH is more? So it has been added acceptor kind of impurity, or we can call it is which kind of semi, uh, is this P type, which is more, the whole concentration is greater. So it is P type, it has acceptor. And what has to be added? What kind of uh, dopant has been added? So because to have extra whole, trivalent impurity has been added. So calculate is conductivity. 
if mobility is given. So this one, I think either you remember the formula or we have done that in previous sheet, you can easily look at conductivity is equal to charge into charge per unit volume into its mobility. So we do because for of electron as well as for pole, and we substitute this value, we can easily calculate conductivity. Even here also you notice that a mu E is greater than whole mobility. This is greater. So here, mostly the current will be, which is majority charge carrier. This is the majority hole is the majority charge carrier. So calculation of uh, uh, mobility, calculation of conductivity, simple use of formula. And you may see this kind of once or twice, this kind of question also has come in the examination. The simple substitution. Other question also, so suppose you have material, you have semiconductor. Now, as a semiconductor, what we want, we have, we have electrons which are in the valence band and very small proportion of them are there in the conduction band. Why very small proportion of one? Because they don't have that kind of energy. One way to make this electron from the valence band to move up to, to ionize them and make them into conduction band is we can give energy in terms of photo, photo radiation. So if, but when we use a photo radiation, this photon should have energy equal or greater than eg then only it can improve its conductivity so when the pole will so what has to be so what is the condition here eg energy gap has to be equal to energy of photon or eg has to be less than energy of photon so this is this nanometer given what is energy of photon this energy of photon is 1240 divided by 2480 so energy gap has to be of this order. This energy gap so roughly 0.5 electron volts. If energy gap is this order, then photon, when the electron, when it absorbs this energy, it moves from, it will overcome this energy gap here and move to conduction band. And if it moves from here to here, its conductivity will improve. That was uh, in the semiconductor and more important application of semiconductor is in terms of diode. And diode is uh, two semiconductors formed together. So P and junction. So you have one is P. What does P indicate? P indicate what is the majority charge carrier in P? P means positive. It will have more number of holes. Does it mean it will not have uh, free electrons? It will have uh, free electrons also, but this will be less than one in a billion, very small number. Now this is P type. Uh, so a lot of holes are there. And, uh, and other is N type. N type means it has a lot of free electrons in the conduction band and very few, very few holes are there, exception. So, and this thing is not that we have P-type semiconductor, you join them together. We join them together. See the surface, this has to be basically cast in place. This has to be created in one block. Then only this interface is perfect, perfectly fusing together. It's not that we create two blocks one P-type semiconductor, one in time, and we bring in contact. No, it has to be done in C2. So in C2, so if we have something like this, if they're in contact, what will happen? See, we understand here, this electron also behaves like a gas. And you know, in case of gas also, it has a property of diffusion. Diffusion means it tends to move from higher concentration region to lower concentration region. So here also, when two are kept side by side, uh, two P-type uh, extrinsic semiconductor, what is P-type? It has a charge carriers, which are free to move around our positive charge, which is nothing but hole. It's a, like appear to be positive charge. And overall, this also is neutral. This also is neutral. So when uh, here the concentration on left hand side, electron concentration left hand side is very small. So this electron will tend to diffuse from higher concentration over to lower concentration. And where would diffusion happen? Near the boundary. And similar way, other side will have a lot of holes here. And because of diffusion, it will move from region of higher concentration to lower concentration. So this is, and as H moves from left to right, it creates a diffusion current. What is the direction of diffusion current? Both are creating current in the same direction. So direction of diffusion current will be this. This is the direction of diffusion current. As soon as two semiconductors are created like this with a common boundary. This is diffusion current. Diffusion current is on account of difference in concentration levels. 
So when and this what happens? Now what happens after the diffusion takes place? This electron is removed. Earlier this block was fully neutral. This block also is neutral. Now what has happened? The positive charge has moved from here to here, and negative charge has moved from here to here. For any reason, if net charge moves, so here negative charge has gone from here. It will leave behind from the region. So I take a small area here. From here, electrons have moved towards right, and from this small area, holes have moved towards. Sorry, holes have moved towards right, electrons have moved towards left. So wherever electrons have moved from the region where electrons have moved, it will leave behind a positive charge. It will acquire that area will acquire a positive charge. And here the holes have moved towards right, and holes positive charge move from a region, it leaves behind a net negative charge. So overall, this entire region is still neutral, but some region here will acquire positive charge, and this boundary will acquire a negative charge. This will have what happened a little while later after some diffusion has taken place. So it leaves behind a region of positive charge and negative charge. And once this form here, so when it moves, it will come and recombine. So there are holes. Actually, it is recombination also happening. So it will, you have, uh, uh, if they diffuse, concentration of E has come down, H has come down. And this here, this particular region, very narrow region here, where they come and recombine here. So this hole will disappear. This free electron will disappear. This is called a depletion zone. Depletion region means concentration of charge carrier will be very small. Concentration of any and NH will be very small. It will, that's why it's called depleted. This will, this will become this region, whatever concentration of NH we have here, and why we have here, this will have much lower concentration of electron as well as four. And second thing, what happens? It creates a field. So earlier, uh, if we're, this is positive, this is negative, it's like a capacitor. It creates a field. So whenever you have a charge separation, it becomes like a dipole, or you can think of it becomes like a capacitor. So how is the direction of field? The direction, if we have any point here, this point will be, if we have direction of field, we can find out imaginary positive charge. This will tend to, this force will tend to exert a force towards left and negative charge also will exert a force towards left. So it will have a field of this nature. So in this region, after the depletion, in first diffusion starts, because the diffusion, there's a net charge created as the charge moves. And when the net charge created, it creates a field. This is the direction in the field is created. And where the field exists, it exists only in the depletion, depletion region. Moment the field exits here, this if now whole whole is still tending to move from left to right, but this field is exerting a force on the whole towards left. This field makes it difficult for whole to move from left to right. It slows down diffusion current. So as the depletion region forms, the field develops. It prevents further diffusion of whole. It also opposes the diffusion of electrons. Only thing what it supports when the, this field forms, it only supports motion of minority charge carrier. So there are very few like positive charge here. If this positive charge is tending to move, this field will support motion of this positive charge. But this is extremely small in number. Effectively, this is this what has happened. This this develops, but it leads to something else also. What it develops here? So this is small region where concentration of any and NH are very less. But you know, even this temperature is at room temperature. So even now, electron hole pair formation is taking place. But let's suppose because the heat here, electron hole formation takes place. Electron, so here, a whole electron formation takes place. Because of the field, as soon as electron hole has the finish. So the field exists even inside the semiconductor? Yes, but you understood why this electrostatic field why it has come? See, just think of a layer. See, there's a layer of electron very close to the boundary. This electrons have diffused. When the electrons are diffused, when from any region electron moves, what is the charge that area will acquire? It will acquire a positive charge. So very near narrow region. Uh, on the N side, it will have net positive charge. On the H side, it will have net negative charge. Hence, there's a field. There's a charge separation. Charge separation leads to field. And this is like this. And this is the field like this. And effect of field is what? So one thing what you understand, diffusion current. And as this uh, uh, depletion region develops and field develops, diffusion currents comes down. 
what will happen to second thing is electron hole pair formation see moment the field is created as soon as electron hole for pair formation takes place immediately the electron will tend to move in this direction because of field and hole will move tend to move in the opposite direction it will they will not recombine because they have now uh, because of presence of field they are pushed in the opposite direction the so recombination will immediately will move to they will be separated and because of this separation this also this is equivalent to positive charge moving towards left and negative charge moving towards right so both opposite charge moving in the opposite direction is equivalent to current being created in the same direction so it will lead to this electron hole pair formation within the depletion region leads to one more current which is called drift current so there are two kind of current one is diffusion current diffusion current is uh, from higher concentration to lower concentration and this gradually comes down because of uh, depletion zone formation but dip, within depletion zone electron hole pair formation they get separated out and it creates a drift current which is in the opposite direction of diffusion current so when you form this one there will be some period where this will happening and formally anything at its it will come to steady state in case of steady state the width of the depletion layer will be fixed field also will be fixed and diffusion current and drift current also will come to steady value and both will be equal thus a steady state of pn junction so pn junction drift current is equal and opposite it comes to card state this is what it looks like so there is a uh, diffusion current and we can read diffusion current also we can divide what is elect, uh, due to diffusion of electron and due to diffusion of hole so net current diffusion current is this direction and hole current direction is opposite direction okay and this depletion region what is the size of the depletion region depletion region is the size is extremely small it is of the order of 0.1 micrometer why i am giving this value cuz these last two three topics these are the only topics where you can expect even a theoretical question a factual question so yes this question also similar question may be asked what is the size of uh, uh, size of depletion region depletion region size is of the order of less than a micrometer and there is a field as well and uh, and wherever there is a field it will lead to a potential difference as well so what will happen field will create a potential barrier which will oppose diffusion so if the field direction is like this we know the potential increases opposite to direction of field so compared to, as you move from here to here the field exists only in this region so from here to here no field here no potential difference only as one move from one end of the uh, depletion zone to other end as you move along we can assume field to be constant the potential will rise and this potential and uh, this will be product of field into depletion zone thickness e into d will be the potential difference and higher the potential difference is more difficult it will be and this potential difference what you can understand in terms of field field is acting towards left so when the positive charge because of difference in concentration when it tries to diffuse from this side to this side this field will oppose if field is opposing there is a potential great barrier here and we call it potential barrier because it is opposing its motion from natural diffusion motion so only those elect, uh, uh, holes which we can think of will have adequate kinetic energy will be able to work up what is necessary condition the kinetic energy say like uh, electron is trying kinetic energy should be greater than q times potential difference e into potential difference then only it will overcome the potential barrier potential barrier now we can get potential barrier there's a we can we can change the potential barrier by applying external voltage and that's where the application comes in so here the what is a diode or what is a diode diode is a pn junction pn junction is called a diode and we see some simple application of diode so there is a p junction and n junction and whenever it is formed in a steady state it has a, it will have a depletion region very narrow depletion region will have a electric field it will have a potential barrier and we have seen what the potential barrier which side is higher this will be at a lower level and this will be higher what we can do by applying external we can if we connect it to battery if we connect it to battery what we can do we can change this potential difference the battery creates its own field its own potential difference so by 
potential barrier can be altered by applying external voltage. Now we can apply external voltage in two fashions. Either I can connect positive terminal to P side or I can connect negative terminal to P side. And one is called forward bias, other is called reverse bias. We'll understand what happens in case of forward bias, and what happens in case of reverse bias. So forward bias is connected to positive terminal. If P is connected to positive terminal, so this will have like, if we connect to positive terminal, it's like this P a positive charge here. So if we connect to something like this, if P is connected to positive terminal, it's called forward bias. So when we connect like this, see this uh, potential barrier is formed because of the negative charge. Moment we have in the positive charge, in the positive charge moves here, it will tend to, uh, see, this is creating this side higher potential, this side lower potential. Whereas depletion region, this is higher and this is lower. So when we apply a forward bias, it tends to lower the potential barrier. More than that, don't try to understand too much. What is forward bias? Since it is polarity is reverse, it is, uh, and it tends to lower the potential barrier. If the potential barrier gets lowered, what is the advantage of lowering potential barrier? So if potential barrier is lowered, it becomes zero. All this positive charge can freely move from here to here, and negative charge also can move and can create current. So idea is if uh, what is preventing current flow, potential barrier is preventing the current flow. If we make the potential barrier zero, the current can easily flow. And how do we make potential barrier zero? Through forward bias. What is forward bias? When the positive P terminal of a diode connected to positive terminal of the battery. Or other way of saying is, P terminal should be at a higher potential and terminal should be at a lower potential. That's called forward bias. So higher and how we denote a diode is the convention side, this is the convention. So when we devote arrow and this head, this, in, this indicates N side, this indicates P side. This is a normal uh, notation we use for a diode. This is P side and N side. If uh, this side is higher potential, this side is lower potential. We can also call this positive or negative, but positive or negative has no meaning. It can be zero, it could be plus five, we can do so. so better way to define forward, forward bias is P is connected to higher potential and is connected to lower potential. That's one way, higher and the tail end. So which side? The tail end is higher potential, head end is a lower potential. There's another way to define. What is the other way? This is higher and this is lower. That's forward bias. Uh, it tends to drive. So which is forward bias? Another way to understand forward bias is when I apply voltage here, the voltage just forget this uh, diode for a second. It was supposed to only resistance. The voltage difference will tend to drive the current in a particular direction. If the applied voltage tends to drive the current in the direction of arrow, it is forward bias. If the applied voltage is such is tending to drive the current opposite to direction of arrow, it's a reverse bias. Okay, we'll come to some case. So suppose this point is connected to earth and this connected to minus two volts. If it is connected like this, I will check which potential is higher. Between the two here, minus two or earth, this, is, this potential is higher. Where size higher potential connected, it is connected to the tail end. Hence, the, it will tend to make the current flow in this direction. This also is a forward bias. One more example, if this is minus two and this is minus five, both are negative. But among the two, if I connect these two potential across these two points, which direction the current will tend to flow? Current will tend to flow from higher potential to lower potential. Among the two, this is higher. So this uh, voltage also will tend to make the current flow in the direction of arrow, left to right. This also is forward bias. What does forward bias do? It lowers the potential barrier and it makes the depletion region also thinner. The depletion region thickness will decrease if we apply a forward bias. And the moment this potential barrier becomes zero, the current starts flowing much more easily. And if we apply this kind of voltage, yes, maybe if adequate forward bias, we can have current of the order of milliampere, which also is fairly large for semiconductor. Milliampere is taken as a large current, a very small currents are in the order of microampere, which you'll see in the next slide. So what is, if we are apply forward bias, what is the order of current we get? We get the current of the order of milliampere, and which direction the current will flow? It will flow in the direction of arrow. What does this arrow indicate? P side is the this side, and the line indicates the N side. This is PN junction is called a diode. And we'll see it is called diode. It allows current to flow only in one particular direction. Okay. 
And so what is the minimum voltage I need to apply for appreciable current to flow? The minimum current we, we need to apply minimum uh, forward bias voltage difference, what we need to apply depends on the height of the potential barrier. And potential barrier depends on the material. So what we find, and this number also is better to remember, the threshold voltage, what is the minimum voltage is equal to barrier voltage. For germanium, a semiconductor is like 0.2 volts. For silicon, it is 0.7 volts. Okay. So until this potential become the barrier is neutralized by applying a forward bias, it doesn't allow much current to flow. If the, it allows less current to flow, it means its resistance is extremely high. So up to for germanium, for less than 0.2 voltage, its resistance will be very high. After type 0.2 volt, its resistance will drop. We'll see that one in terms of uh, one more form. So when we call something like this is threshold voltage, and this is called IV characteristics. What does IV characteristics mean? So what different value of voltage, how much current will flow? So this is something, just look at this. So this is kind of, what we notice here, this is the voltage here coming, this is voltage increasing, and this side indicates this is forward bias. What does forward bias means? T side connected to higher potential. So what you notice here, and uh, this is current here. We notice here up to, um, across, up to 0.6 volts or up to almost 0.7 volts, there's no current. Why there's no current? Until this point, the potential barrier is still existed. And this volt potential, which where the potential become, becomes zero and current starts flowing in appreciable quantity, is called threshold voltage. So when I look at the figure, can we identify threshold voltage? What is the voltage? What is the minimum forward bias voltage we need to apply to make the current flow of the order of milliampere? It is around 0.6 or 0.7 volts. So what kind of semiconductor? This is very likely this is silicon diode. Had it been germanium diode, the curve would have started something like this from here, 0.2. And other thing what you notice here, see after this, uh, the voltage does not increase. It remains constant. So any amount of current will flow uh, and the voltage difference across the diode will remain 0.8 only. So it doesn't change much. So uh, let's understand here. So it doesn't display linear property. So in case of Ohm's law, Ohm's law is something like this. What is Ohm's law? Ratio between current and voltage is constant. Here the ratio between voltage current ratio is not constant. So this doesn't have a, doesn't have a like, a, it doesn't obey Ohm's law. So this is forward bias and the, the threshold voltage we have been mentioned. And okay, first bias, what happens if you apply reverse bias? Reverse bias means this is already at a lower potential, this was a higher potential. If I reverse bias, I connect it to lower potential, I connect it to higher potential. What will happen? I'm adding two plus and adding two negative. I'm making the potential barrier even more steep. It increases potential barrier. It increases width of the depletion region. And if the potential barrier becomes higher, very little current can flow. But here also, if we do positive negative, so there are some small, very small concentration of H, positive charge. So when we have this positive potential here, it tends to push this positive charge. Only small quantity of minority charge carrier will flow in the reverse direction. So when you apply reverse bias, there's extremely small current. Uh, here, forward bias is order of milliampere. Reverse bias, it is in the reverse direction and current is of order of microampere. And this is already, well, even if you don't apply forward bias also, even this potential barrier was not opposing motion of minority charge carrier. So even if we apply reverse bias, it doesn't change the current much. So the current which is flowing in the reverse bias always remains constant. It does have no effect because of the voltage of the reverse bias and remains constant only when and then there's something called this voltage. Suddenly you find it remains constant, very small value. And this is due to minority charge carrier flow. And this is something is called, this is threshold voltage. Threshold voltage is minimum forward bias for appreciable current to flow. And this is called breakdown voltage. What happens if the reverse bias is large enough, not only apply a positive voltage, you apply a large, large enough voltage here. It accelerates this electron and hole so much, they acquire kinetic energy to create further ionization. And it leads to like, just like a dielectric breakdown, it leads to breakdown of the diode and suddenly large current starts flowing. This is breakdown voltage. So reverse bias, forward bias, up to threshold voltage, very high, very little current. When the current is less, 
high resistance. So this is the region where forward bias voltage is less than threshold voltage. Current is negligible, resistance is high. After threshold voltage, some significant current start flowing, resistance becomes much less. Reverse direction, the current flow is due to minority charge carrier. And this is not so much affected by the voltage. Up to a point, a moment reverse bias leads, uh, is equivalent or greater than breakdown voltage, it be, current becomes suddenly very large. It breaks. It breaks. Basically, what happens in that case, diode gets spoiled. Large current will flow and it will not be useful for further use. And even then also, uh, and the breakdown voltage remains constant. Here also it becomes vertical. It means voltage across the diode does not change much. In the forward bias also we notice here, the voltage does not change much. So this is a very peculiar kind of curve. And um, uh, yeah, one need to understand what is this curve indicate. Reverse bias increases potential barrier. Let's look at this. The reverse saturation current is what? Reverse saturation current is because of diffusion of minority charge carrier to depletion region and then move across. Okay. Now coming to, uh, see, uh, you may come across some theory questions, but we have seen very few theory questions. Most of the questions which have come from this topic are numericals, simple numericals, or sim those numericals are similar to DC circuit. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Uh, suppose this is how actually a diode is connected or PN junction is connected to circuit. Uh, you have shown like this, actually it will never be so wide here. The depletion layer we had talked about is order of 0.1 micrometer. And, and we connect a resistance also. The so same thing can be shown in a circuit. The circuit is shown like this. What, is this. what does this indicate? A diode is connected with the resistance as well as a battery. When it's connected like this, how is this positive terminal or higher voltage is connected to negative side and lower voltage is connected to positive side? This is reverse bias. So this is how it is connected in the reverse bias. And so we need to understand this kind of circuit. So whenever in a DC circuit, how does diode behave? When we talk about diode behave, we have to understand two things. What is the voltage potential drop across the diode? And what is the resistance diode offers? So once you understand, if we replace diode with the resistance, then my job becomes simple. <coughs> so one of the two things, what is the voltage drop across the diode should be known. This bias should be known, R is resistance. Now we understand how is behavior in a DC circuit. Okay. In the ideal case, some cases they mentioned is an ideal diode. So ideal diode means in forward direction, it offers zero resistance. In reverse direction, it offers infinite resistance. So no potential drop will take place because resistance is zero. There is zero resistance, zero resistance in forward bias. So that's the ideal uh, diode. Sometimes it is mentioned, suppose it is mentioned, the purposely the mention, if the diode, nothing is mentioned, if nothing is given, you can assume it's an ideal diode, it's a zero resistance in forward bias, sorry, I didn't write there, and it'll offer infinite resistance in reverse bias. No current will flow in the reverse bias. So suppose it's connected like this, this is reverse bias, here the current will be zero, yes? So what about the, like the current in the order of uh, milliampere that's flowing inside the diode? Yep, uh, See, what we understand from this figure, I'll just repeat the previous part here. What does figure indicate for particular potential drop across the diode? It will have particular value of potential drop and there'll be corresponding current passing through the diode. And this is a curve here. What does this curve indicate? Up to, first of all, current is of the order of milliampere. It is possible only in case of forward bias. But even the forward bias also, the current will be there only if the forward bias is not only it is forward bias, it is adequate forward bias. What is adequate forward bias? Threshold voltage. If that exceeds, it will have this kind of shape. And we look at this, I think we are now we are coming to, this is the IV characteristics. I mean, have you understood what is, why it is called IV characteristic curve? It gives you a relationship between different voltage and current. How, how are these two related? In case of normal resistance, the relationship is linear, which is very simple which is the ratio of V by I. In this case, it's slightly different, and that's part we need to understand now. We are going to understand now. Uh, I think the time is almost running out of time. So next session, I will continue with uh, how do we solve questions which are of this type. And to solve this question, if two, three things we understand, thus all is needed to solve questions involving diode in a circuit. 
So we'll see that one. And we notice some of the things are, whether once you look at few questions, perhaps after solving five, 10 questions, you go back, go back to theory part also, you may find it is slightly easier to understand. So understanding a theory also improves once you are done some numericals on it.